That is the question that we're asking today. The question is, do you know him? Do you know the king that we call Jesus? Have you made a decision to live with him in your life? Because everything that we're talking about today, all the things that we've gone through, this entire thematic underpinning is talking about the magnitude of the choices that we make. For the last three weeks here at Victory, we've been talking about choices. And today, we want to push that just a little bit further. Now, what I understand is that every single one of us in this room, we have to make choices. As a matter of fact, Research shows that every adult makes about an average of 35,000 choices a day. As a matter of fact, just in choices of food alone, we make about 227 choices. Now, some of y'all have already started that decision-making process right now as you're looking at me. You're already thinking about where you're going to eat when you leave here. You're already thinking about who you're going to do it with. But today, as we're talking about that, and as we know that food is a very important choice, the decision on what you're going to eat only quenches a temporary thirst, only fulfills a temporary hunger. And the things that we're talking about today, we're actually talking about a choice that has far bigger magnitude. The choice we're talking about today is if you will choose to allow Jesus to live in your heart. If you will choose to allow him to be Lord of your life, because I guarantee that when we make that choice to receive Jesus, that will actually fulfill a hunger that's eternal. And most of us in here, we've had to make that choice at one time or another. And as I'm looking at you and I'm looking around this room deep into your eyes and I see the decisions that are already kind of going through us, what I do understand is that for the most part, most of us in here are a part of one or two main categories. The first category is those who are already believers in Christ, those who are already saved, those who have already professed your allegiance to Jesus. And that's the entire reason why we're here. We're here to celebrate Jesus. We're here to celebrate a risen king. We're here to celebrate the one who died on the cross, who gave up his life so that we could have life today. The entire reason we can call ourselves Christians and believers and followers and disciples of Jesus is because he did something over 2,000 years ago. That's not fictitious. That's not fake. That's not something that we just read about. But we understand right here in this room that the tomb is empty today. The tomb is empty and he lives and he wants to live on the inside of you. Now, as we talk about those choices and being a part of those two groups, you might be that one that is a follower, but today you might be someone who just were invited here today. You might not be a follower of Jesus yet, but the good news that I have for you today is that today becomes a door for you. Today becomes an opportunity for you to receive Jesus in your heart and to experience what all of us are singing about while we're raising our hands. This entire storyline that we gave you today is to show you who he is to you. Now, all of us have to make that choice, and that choice is, will you allow Jesus to live in your heart? Will you allow him to be the one who leads you? Or will you continue to try to lead your own life? And I'm here to tell you, I was about 17 years old when I made that choice, when I was faced with that decision. I had just graduated high school. I had gone off to college, and I had recently been bestowed with two distinguished senior superlatives. How many people remember the senior superlatives? The first one that they gave me was, Mo is most likely to tear the club up every weekend. Yeah, I was that guy. I know I'm up here preaching today, but I was that guy. But the second one that they gave me, as I think about it, it's actually not even appropriate to mention in the Sunday morning service. Use your imagination. But either way, when you look at those two, it actually tells you that I was headed down the wrong path. I was headed down a path of destruction. I was headed down a path where I knew that I wouldn't have long-term life. Now, I come from a background where I have been raised in the church. I grew up in the church. I was a good church boy, but did I have Jesus on the inside of my heart? That was the question. And when I went to school... I thought that I was going to go and actually do this new thing. I said, I'm going to go and I'm going to be this two-sport athlete. I'm going to enjoy what college students do. I'm going to have all the fun that athletes have. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But when I got there, I, I saw immediately that God had another plan. 
I saw immediately that he had a different insight from me that I had to just catch up with. When I got to school early in the semester as a football player before everyone came on campus, not even a week went by, and I believe in the form of a coach, God sent the angel. God sent the angel because after we had been training hard for a week, we were getting used to being college students. And the coach came and he said to myself and to several other of my teammates, he said, listen, I know you guys have been working hard. I know you're out here in the, in the, in the hot sun and you're sweating and you're getting broken down. I want to take you away and let you get a little rest. I want to feed you. I want to give you some barbecue. I want to let you have some fun and play some games. So, again, being the naive 17-year-old college student I was, I said, absolutely, I'm going. Because I wanted that free meal. I wanted some time to get away from campus. And we got there, and we had a great time. We were playing all the sports. We were enjoying ourselves. We ate real good. And then they came around and started to gather us up and said, okay, now we're going to go in this other room over here. And as soon as we got together and we went into that other room, I immediately knew that I had been duped. I immediately knew that I had been bamboozled. I had been run amok. I knew that I needed to be in this situation, but at the same time, I didn't want to be in this situation because I was in a situation where someone was about to talk to us. And they came up front and they started to talk about the gospel. And again, because I was a good church boy, I grew up in church, but I wasn't living the way that I knew Christ was on the inside of me. So immediately as they started to talk, I already knew where the end of this conversation was going. So I went through the motions. I shook my head and made sure that he didn't call me out. But as I was sitting there, something happened. The pastor looked into my eyes like I'm looking into the eyes of you all that are here today. And he locked eyes with me, and I was trying to look around. And he pointed at me. And I did what we all do. I did like this. <laughs> like I was in the matrix or something. I said, he surely can't be talking to me. But he was talking to me. And he said, young man, I want you to come up here. And when I made my way up there, scared and afraid, because, again, I'm amongst my peers. I'm amongst my teammates. I'm amongst those who come from Atlanta, where I'm from. And as I got up there, the pastor started to speak certain words over my life. He started to declare destiny over my life. He started to say that God wants to use you. By the second word that he spoke, I already knew what he said was true because I knew what I was supposed to be doing, but I was running from it. And he made one line. He said one line that actually grabbed me, that changed the trajectory of my life. He looked at me and he said, young man, God has chosen you for a purpose. He has chosen you for something bigger than you're walking in now. And as we're talking about choices, all of us have a choice to make. And I don't know about you, you might have just come here because someone invited you, or you might be a long-term believer, but I declare today that some of us are going to make a choice today to involve Jesus in our lives, to allow him to lead our lives. And what I realized in that as I was listening to him and I was shaking my hand, head, immediately I just gave up and I said, yes, Lord. I said, yes, Lord, because what I had done is for a long time, I had a great God consciousness. But in that moment, I had to shift from having a God consciousness to having a God commitment. And today, no matter where you find yourself, understand that this is an opportunity to make a God commitment. Now, again, as I was standing there and listening to him talk to me, for the first time in my life, I realized that all I had to do was respond to what had already been done in my favor. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean that God actually made the first move. He was playing chess and I was playing checkers. He already had something established there for me. And what was it? The Bible tells us very clearly. This is John chapter 3, verse 16. Very familiar verse of scripture if you have ever heard the gospel preached to you. But this is the good news that we're talking about today. If you haven't heard it before, I want you to hear very closely. I want you to perk your ears up in this and listen with a different ear. The Bible tells us from the message paraphrase, it says, this is how much God loved the world. He gave his son, his one and only son. And this is why, so that no one need be destroyed. By believing in him, anyone can have a whole and lasting life. Hear this, 
God didn't go through all that trouble of sending his son merely to point an accusing finger, telling the world how bad it was. He came to help, to put the world right again. And this is all of us. Anyone who trusts in him is acquitted, is forgiven, is redeemed, is set free. He goes on to say, anyone who refuses to trust me has long since been under the death sentence without even knowing it. And why? Because of that person's failure to believe in the one of a kind son of God when introduced to him. That's very sober. And as we stand here today, you may have been introduced one time or another to this man, to this king, to this God in flesh called Jesus. But today, I believe this is going to be different than any other time that you may have been introduced to him. Because I just want to give you three things. There are three things that I want us to grab as in the simple gospel, in the simple understanding of why we're celebrating Jesus today. Yes, he took our place. Yes, he had all power in his hand. And he could have take, taken himself down. And so many people, they will say, why, if a God was that powerful, if he was so strong, if he could have uh, really had a legions of angels to come to him, why didn't he do it? He was so powerful. And the power that he was walking in was the love that he had for you. The love that he had for you is what actually kept him on the cross where he didn't bring himself down from the cross. And that is for all of us in here. And the three quick things that I want to share with you today is, number one, very simply, God loves you. God loves you. You might be saying, okay, I've heard that before. I've heard of Buddha loving me. I've heard of Muhammad loving me. I've heard of all these other gods loving me. But I'm here to tell you that God, through Jesus Christ, the only way, the only truth, the only life is the one who loves you today. Now, what does that mean to you? It means that God, as it says in the scripture, he didn't go through all this trouble just for nothing. He went through this trouble because of you. He knew exactly what you would be wearing today. He knew exactly who you would be sitting next to. He knew exactly that you would be here at the 11 o'clock service. And he wants you to know that it is not an accident that you're hearing his voice today. So as we're listening to this and we understand that God loves us, understand this. He didn't send his son to condemn you. He sent his son to save you, but we have to receive him. And number two, number two, he wants us to trust him. He wants you to trust him. He wants me to trust him. This is not a blanket word. This is not something that's just a YouTube on-demand word that is for somebody else. This is for you. This is for you to understand that no matter where you find yourself, no matter how bad you think you're off, God loves you and he wants you to trust him. Now, I know we live in a world where we're we're full of rejection. We live in a world where we can't put our trust in different people. God's not asking you to put your trust in a man. He's not asking you to put your trust in your parents. He's not even asking you to put your trust in your best friend. This day, he's asking you to take another look and to trust him him. Now, what does it mean today? What does that mean to trust him? To trust him means that I understand that, God, you've done something to forgive me. But furthermore, my trust in you means that I'm going to turn away from some old habits. I'm going to turn away from some old ways of doing things. I'm going to turn from so that I can turn to and have you feel me again. I don't know about you, but when I was 17, when when I thought I knew what I knew, I had to be re- built. I had to be renewed. I had to come into a new knowledge of what God had for me. And that trust also means I have to let him in my heart. You might be hearing my voice today and saying, all of this sounds good. Everyone was lifting their hands. The production sounds well, but can I really trust him? All the way on the back of the room, can you really trust him? The answer is yes. You can trust him today. You can trust him with your faults. You can trust him with your fears. You can trust him with your deficiencies. But we have to step in that and understand that he's right there waiting on us. And then lastly, very simply, the ball is in your court because the choice is yours. This is not something that someone else can do. This is not your mom's gospel. This is not your grandmother's gospel who can pray you into heaven. This is for you to understand that Jesus died on the cross 
to forgive you of your sins so that you can have eternal life right here on this earth and after this, you can walk in the abundance. But if we don't grab it, if we don't take it, if we allow him to knock on our hearts and we say, not now, we will be in despair. Let me ask you a question. How many times have you been presented with the gospel and you said, not now? How many times has Jesus knocked on your heart and you said, I'm going to wait till after I get married, God. I got you. I'll come back. I'm going to wait till after I finish this master's degree. I'm going to get back to you. I'm going to wait till I go through this overseas program. I'm going to get back to you. Jesus is saying, don't harden your heart. I'm here. I've done all of this today. I've made all of these arrangements just for you. And as we look at this, I want you to lean in. I want you to lean in on something. Come on, lean in, Midtown. Y'all know how we like to do it. The great thing about this Jesus that we're serving, come on, lean in all the way on the back row. Lean in. Y'all not exempt. The great thing about this gospel that we're talking about is that we get to choose a choice that has already been made for us. We get to choose and actually participate in something with someone who has already fixed the fight. You're not going into a situation wondering if you're going to have the victory. You're not going into a situation wondering if Jesus loves you. I'm telling you here, as clearly as you can hear my voice over this microphone, Jesus is saying, I want you. I've been waiting on you. I love you. And if you don't believe me, the Bible tells it to us. It says it right here in John 15, 16. It says this, you didn't choose me. You might be thinking that you're going to make a choice for God today, but I'm here to tell you he's already set it up. He's just looking for you to respond. You don't have to fear being rejected on this time. He wants, to know, he wants you to know that he has chosen you. It says, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. Not temporary fruit that rots away, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. Do you need peace today? Do you need companionship today? Do you need rest in your mind today? Whatever I, I'm saying right here, I can't even tell you all the things that you're going through, but I'm here to tell you that Jesus is the key to you getting it. But you have to have him in order to experience that fullness. So if you receive Jesus today, he will bring every single one of these things and more. But I'm here to tell you, just like I had to make a decision around my teammates, some of us are going to have to make a decision today around our teammates. This is a group today that is here today to make sure that we all walk in the freedom of Jesus, that none of us operate in the condemnation of hell. And a lot of times we hear about hell and we don't want to deal with that, but I'm here to tell you God wants to free you up from that here on earth and after this earth. But we have to receive it. Listen to this. As I close this up, we ask the question, Pilate asked the question, who do you choose? We're talking about for the last three weeks, what is your choice for life and death? But again, I make the statement that trumps that question. God has already chosen you. He has already established you. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, he knew you. He sanctified you. He fixed the fight so that you can come into the newness of life. So my question as we finish today is, do you know him? Do you know him? But more than do you know him, do you want to know him? Do you want to receive that newness of life? Because I'm here to tell you, right now in this room, no matter where you find yourself, in the back or right here on the front, there's something happening that Jesus is knocking on the door to some people's hearts right here. You might hear this. It might not sound like that in your spirit. To you, it might be you having sweaty palms right now. To you, it might be your heart fluttering right now. To you, it might be saying, I wish he would sit down and stop talking about this because I know where I'm at already. But for all of us, I want us to know Jesus is saying, listen, right there in Revelation 3, listen, I am standing and knocking at your door. 
This is not a blanket statement. This is personal. He's knocking at your door. He's trying to change your life. And he goes on to say, if you hear my voice and open the door while I'm knocking, I will come in and we will eat together. So all that I'm saying today, as we've come in here to celebrate a risen king, my question to you is, who will you choose? Will you allow Jesus into your heart? Will you no longer put it off thinking that I have a later time to do it? And in this moment, I want to pose that question. But I want to pose it so that you can think about it yourself. With every head bowed in this place, with every eye closed in this place, I want you to think about this. If you have heard this entire presentation today, if you have heard this message today, and you know right here as you're sitting in that seat that I need to make a decision to accept Jesus in my heart, that I don't want to go another moment without experiencing the love that you're talking about today, you may have already felt something coming on the inside of you. It's not something, it's someone. His name is Jesus. So my question to you is if you will choose Jesus today, if you're tired of living the way you've been living and you want to say, Lord, I want to give Jesus a try, I want you to lift your hand up in the air while all heads are bowed. We see those hands going up all over. You may be saying, I'm already saved. I've already given my life to Jesus at one point, but I haven't been living with that commitment to Jesus. And I today on Easter Sunday, 2019, want to put a mark in the sand and say, Jesus, I'm coming back to you. I also want you to lift your hand in the air. Hands are going up all over the building. Lift those hands high. Lift those hands high. This is personal. Don't worry about somebody sitting next to you. Don't worry about if somebody thought that I was already, I had it all together. I want you to know today, God is calling for you. And in this moment, if you have your hand up, I want you to make a bold move. I'm not going to call you down to the front or anything like that, but I want you to stand right there where you are, all over the room. Just stand up right there where you are. If you raise your hand for either one of those calls, stand all over the room. This is not a moment that we rush past. This is not a moment that we just say, okay, we came and had a great service. There was a great production. People came in. They wore their Easter best. Today is a day where God wants to give you his best. God wants you to receive his son, Jesus, who was tortured, who gave himself up, not for your neighbor, but for you. There's more people standing right now. And I believe there's about four or five other people that yes, you feel that pressing. Yes, you know that you came here Sunday because you know that there's something more that you need. I'm gonna wait on you for just a moment. I'm gonna wait on you for just a moment, I see you. You're setting people free by you standing up. I want you guys just to look around the room one second. This is not to embarrass anyone. This is to let you know that God loves us so much that he's snatching people out of old things and saying, I want to give newness of life that you have never seen before. I don't care if you think this, you've been living good, you've seen nothing yet until you've allowed Jesus to be the one that has led your life. Now, I know I'm taking a little bit of time here because I believe this is so important. Everything that we did today, I've said it three times, but I'm going to say it again. It's for you. It's for you. I'm willing to wait on you right now. There's about two or three more people. I'm not doing the James Brown saying, please, please, but I am saying, I need you to respond to Jesus right now. Because he loves you so much that he wants you to respond to him. Where are you? Where are you? 
Where are you? Where are you? Take that bold move. Be that one that will change the world because God can work through you. Just like I made a decision over 20 years ago, it led me to this spot. What spot is God waiting on you to respond to him? What spot does he have for you that when you make a response, it will have a trickle effect for generations to come? I'm waiting on one more. I'm waiting on one more. I'm looking around because that one more, you're waiting on me to stop. We see you. Can we lift our hands all over the building? When we lift our hands, this is a sign of surrender. This is a sign that, Lord, I'm giving up all the power that I have, and I'm asking that you come into my heart to allow me to live by your power. And in this moment, I want, as a body of believers, that we join together with our brothers and sisters who have taken this bold step. And we're going to pray this prayer together so that we all can operate in the newness of life. So repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner. And I recognize that I need your help. Today I repent. Meaning that I'm turning from my old ways. And I'm asking for your empowerment to allow me to walk in a new way. I believe that Jesus is my Savior. And today I confess him as Lord. I open the door to Jesus in my heart today. I choose life. And by that choice, I am saved. Amen. At this moment, I want to do something. I want all of us to stand. Because we're going to seal that decision that many in the room made today by worshiping the king who we say we're committed to by releasing everything, every fear that we have and saying, Lord, I'm exchanging it all for you. Let's worship the King right now.